But yeah, you know, there's some there's some actors yeah, like I said, that just they just play their their thing. And it's funny because I was I just saw a really good video of um, of Kevin Smith talking about working with his daughter and how that, that was really that was really good. That made me cry a little bit. <laughs> I was like, this is this is. We'll awesome. see. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but like Kevin Smith was even like in a position where he's like, ah, oh, stupid critics, whatever. But then when he started making stuff for his daughter, like he's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like I like to make movies, you know? Yeah. And it's like a, it's like I stopped making it my job and stopped making it my passion again. You know, indeed. Yeah, I saw I saw that too. I was wondering what you were like. You cried, and I was like, "What?" Saw the boss make me cry, and then I heard him talk about it, and I was like, "Ah, I get it." Yeah, it's the whole father daughter part, right? It's like uh, when I saw. Hello, everybody who's just jumping in. By the way, I need to jump jump into my Facebook for some so I can see whatever's talking back. But yeah, it's like um, uh, Michael Michael Young is up in this. Hey, Mike, you want to jump in there? I feel like. You should just jump in, hang out with us. Just message Kalen on Skype, and he'll jump you in. Yeah. What's I'll, up, Billy Blue? Send him an invite. Sorry, I'm cleaning my computer screen right now. My computer screen is dirty. What's up, Rochelle? Uh, add people to the call. Yeah, I'll let Michael, because Michael can help uh, facilitate questions. Because I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of doing some work right now. What's so, May not be. Readily available. Do I have something running? Some more screen cleaners. Let me close this. Wait, it's just the brush. I think he's joining in right now. All right, cool. So uh, I've just been sketching right now, and I just wanted to get people to hang out. But also thought I'd mix it up a bit. What's up, Flo? What's up, Matthew? Hey, what's up, Johnny Hall? Speaking of badasses, yeah. Johnny Hall. I'm John. Toronto, John. Johnny, Sketch mother, effin' ho. Dope. <laughs> dope. <laughs> dope. Yeah, he, I, I know he was dope because you know he kept company with the um, the crush guys. Like he's over there with us, so I knew he was gonna be dope. You know, like amongst all the other guys that work at Crush, right? And then uh, he showed me his stuff, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Crushing it. Yeah. Crush twenty sixteen. Crush that twenty six. that twenty six. Crush that. What? <laughs> we were chanting that. <laughs> you weren't there, I don't think. That's funny. It was me and Dan. Clearly, clearly, I was not. Crush that puh. Crush that puh. <laughs> that does sound like that'd be a jam. Yeah, we were just you know, singing that because those guys are awesome. Almost every single one of them. Levi too. He was like, he was like, yeah, let's do whatever. And I was like, what? Why are you guys so awesome? No, uh, it was it was a great experience, and I think most uh, aside from like you know the students and the people, the Crush guys made it even better. Like those Crush Visual dudes. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Crush Visual is the studio out in Toronto, and they're they're a bunch of badasses. Well, that's why it's always good to kind of have you know local stuff because sometimes people don't know like for whatever reason they'd be following people you know on Art Station and following people in California, but. They don't know that sometimes there are badasses in your backyard, you know? Literally. And it's like, yo, there's some badasses here. You don't no, like, no, literally. Literally. I'm looking in my backyard as I speak, and I see Johnny Hall. What are you doing in my backyard, Johnny? Get out of there. He's That's just, weird, because aren't, aren't, you, aren't you on like, the second floor? Like, how is he up there? That, I'm on the third. I, oh. I don't get it either. Yeah. How is he floating? Oh, what's up, Michael? He made it. Wait, Michael? <laughs> Michael? Michael! Michael! Yeah! I was, watch, I was watching, um, me and my wife went to the gym earlier, and they had Battlefield, or, yeah, not Battlefield, um, Battleship, on the TV. Oh, God. And I was just like, oh, yeah, that's right, this movie came out. I was, at first I was like, what is this movie? Because I see, like, explosions and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm into this. But then as I started seeing less explosions that were awesome, I was just like, wait, what is this movie? And then I saw the the lead. And I was uh, like, oh, this is this is Battleship. And I was yeah, watching yeah. it, and there's like a scene where like um, one of the the monsters gets on the ship or the aliens, and this guy's just like standing there, and he's like, run. And I'm like, why aren't you running? Like, there's no reason for you to even not be running. Like, get out of there too. <laughs> and he just stands there, and then lets the alien walk by him, 
The aliens just like looking at the engine and stuff. And the aliens like, all right, this is tight. I'm gonna blow up this engine. Screw up the battleship. The movie was. Uh, it's kind of funny because I always make I always make fun of my brother. I always tell my brother I was like, yeah, my brother was the person that saved the island of Oahu from the aliens in battleship. Like he was. Was he, was he in the movie? Uh, no, I just make that joke. I'm just oh, like, because it takes place in Hawaii and he was stationed, he's stationed there. So I was like, dude, what was it like, dude, to fight the aliens, man? Like, in Battleship. And he just mm-hmm. kind of stares at me. And then, like, that movie's so bad, too, because then, like, there's a part where, like, I think Rihanna, like, says something Hawaiian. And, like, I, like, cringe every time it happens. Like, she's, like, getting ready to, like, push the button to kill the, to kill the aliens. He says yeah. something like, Ohana or hey, something. What's up, John? You want to jump in this? If so, message Caleb. Sorry, continue. Uh, yeah, she just says something that makes no sense in the context, like tries to look like a Hawaiian term, and I'm like, really? That's like, could this thing be any more cheesier? Um, yeah, it's cheesy, definitely, it's, it's an entertaining movie. It's entertaining. All that no, time. it's not really entertaining. Like, like I was working out, and I was just like, all right, I guess I just got back to my workout. But it just so seems different. like they they just needed they, like the alien should just deployed more of those balls, those like destroying ball things. I was like, that didn't seem to do the trick <laughs> for everything. You should have just deployed more of those. But uh, I forget. Like it was kind of a weird movie. It was like it was it was interesting in a sense, but I was just like, yeah, it's like it's too. I could definitely handle my like my 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 share of Michael Bay, but that was like too bait out for me. Was, but that wasn't a Michael Bay movie. That's the problem. What? That wasn't a Michael Bay. No, that, they that's why it wasn't so good because like everything was like half ass version of Michael Bay. Like I, I've made this argument several times. It's like Michael Bay makes movies that people want to watch. Right? No, I agree with that. I don't. And so problem. what it was is that this, these people are like, well, what if we get a good director? Because the guy who directed it um, was like, no, as a notably good director, right? And like Michael Bay had nothing to do with it. <laughs> he really yeah. did it. It's yeah. like you know that feel of Michael Bay. Just maybe, maybe I'm just that's, kidding. That's uh, the point I'm trying to make of all these times. Like every time people argue it, right? Like, look, you don't have to be a fan of those types of movies. Absolutely, you know. But when Michael Bay is told to make an action film, like, get ready to watch a movie. Do you like, you like... Green no, I like it black. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> well, no, I, I agree. He does do action very well. Yeah, because whenever anyone else tries, like, the only other people that were able to compete with this guy was, like, John Woo. Remember John Woo? I would say Jerry Brockheimer. Does. Yeah, Jerry Brockheimer is another one of those. Like, you know, there's, there's a breed of directors out there who make amazing action movies. Um... The guy who Justin, Lo- I think it was Justin Wong, the guy who does the Fast and Furious movies, like he's another one. Yeah, Justin Wong. Yeah, uh, Justin uh, or uh, J J J Abrams is another great action director. Like when you, if he's put into the fray of making action movies, he's really good at it too. You know, he like did one of the best Mission Impossible movies, in my opinion. You know, yeah, s- still like my- out of all the ones I've seen, like my, uh, the Mission Impossible three is still the best, I think. Because at that point he was already doing Alias, the, sh- the TV show Alias. So yeah, he's a great a action director for sure. Okay, for sure. Yeah, because he he got a lot of sensibilities from, from from Spielberg, and Spielberg is a good action director too. But see, Spielberg is not an action director. Though. He's a he's an adventure, like action adventure. Maybe that's probably a better way of thinking about it. Director, you know, he directs movies that have a lot of sense of adventure, and uses action to in, employ that. You know. Well, I think what made uh, the Mission Impossible. Uh, that one really, really well is because I think he took a lot of elements from Alias, which was before yeah, sure. was kind of always this like secret, secret agent doing all this crazy stuff. But I think what JJ brought to Alias, which 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 is what he brought really well to Mission Impossible, was showing the mundane side um, of being a secret agent when you're not when you're not in the field, kind of like everyday life of having a girlfriend, trying to like balance all that stuff out. Like how to how to get away from your family, how to do all that kind of stuff. So I think that's why that one works so well because it, it definitely kind of humanized the secret agent. It's like you're not just a secret agent; it's like people have lives too. So I thought that was like I thought they did a really good job with that personally. That's cool. All right. Well, what I wanted to do with this uh, hangout. Oh, by the way, did John want to get in here or did? Uh, I sent him an invite. So okay. He you said in the chat. He said in the chat that he's with uh, Mache streaming. Oh, oh shit! They're doing their own stream. All right. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I think what we can do is just have Mike and you help out. What's up, Mike? How you been? I've been good, man. How, how's uh, up, man? how's graduating high school? How's living uh, living? It's uh, good, man. I get a walk <laughs> on uh, Saturday. <laughs> all my Mike. all my high school friends are going to be happy for me. How are you? Okay, this is new to me. I did not know you were in high school. He's not. It's a joke. <laughs> 
I was like, yeah, because yeah. he said he graduated from he graduated from college, but then I, I've been making fun of him. Yeah, AJ, AJ just likes to talk shit. Oh yeah, okay. I was like, what? It's like man, people getting old. People getting. Too. Wait, hold on, sweetheart. Can you close the door? Hey, Delilah, can you close the door, please? Thank you so much, sweetheart. I like your hair, mama. Who did your hair today? Did you do your hair? Looks good. You look beautiful. All right. Anyway. Oh, and door. <laughs> oh, thanks, Papa. <laughs> I'm out. Don't talk to me again. Yo, how was uh how was edge control? It was great, man. Uh, we. I don't want to talk. Edge. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it because we talked about it uh, yesterday, actually. But um, oh, I miss it. Yeah, you can just. I'll go back. That. I'll go back and watch it. Yeah. yeah, but pretty much it was great. It was really, really good. It was a great experience. It was awesome. A lot of fun. Tight. It's great to hear. Tight. Tight. All right. Tight. Tight. All right. So, so now let's let's go to the comments. Um, as I'm painting on this, I want you guys to just, any kind of suggestion you would think would be cool or silly. And now, if it's something that I have a hard time drawing, then I probably will let you guys know. But I can get some reference. You know. Okay, uh, I got but, you. But maybe not. I just want to just kind of stay stay in tune. Maybe in a different one, I'll I'll be prepared to have like reference. I get my reference f stuff ready to go on things that I don't know how to draw. That seems like a fun challenge, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, yeah. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for something you want me to paint, then by all means, on to this thing that I'm already painting. Like, if you want me to change a major feature, even it doesn't have to be additive; it can be subtractive. Um, but just anything. Okay. Are you taking questions too? Yeah, questions too. All right. Yeah. I'm just going through the chat. Yeah. Anything. How's your your stuff going, Mike? Yeah, what do you mean? You're gonna get like a Twitch stream going. You're setting. Oh up. yeah, yeah. Um, so I got a I got a laptop set up. So I mean, if you I don't know if you've seen it, but I have like a setup thing with like tons of monitors and all that. Um, and it was made with the idea of doing streams and videos and stuff. Um, and after graduation, I was given some money from my family, so I invested in that uh, even further and got myself a setup with a laptop, pretty much identical to what I'm doing at home. And I've been testing that for the past couple of weeks, trying to stream with the laptop to know that I can stream outside of the house. Um, so far, it's successful. The first stream I'm going to do is probably going to be Mechhead Test 5, uh, since I've done four so far. Really? And that, that's thanks to you. <laughs> Great tutorial. Yeah, man, um, of course. And yeah, I've just been talking with John, trying to see if we're going to do some gaming stuff. And you know, it's a development uh, process. I Pretty soon, hopefully, within like the next month. But my car is like messing up, like life. You know what I mean? Life, life's hard. Art is easy. Sure. Yeah, I'll figure it out as I go. I'm not gonna overthink it. Sweetheart, stop kissing me. <laughs> Get right. out of here. You're so sexy. Get out of here. No. no. All right. Anyways. So the first this. thing I'm seeing in the chat. Any suggestions, y'all? Well, I see. Uh, I see something. All pierced and chains. Get on yeah, this. That'd be cool. Get on this, guys. <laughs> well, I, you just asked me a question. All right. Um, so Alex it Greenwood is. said, "Can you draw Guido? Guido? Oh, ignore that. That's like a complete start over thing. All right. But I will actually. I'll do. I'll do something like that one day, where it's more like I'll just draw whatever people tell me to draw. All like right, I said, cool. I'll, I'll need reference though. I just don't want to open up my browser. I just want to kind of stay in Photoshop. All right, I'm just going to make my way up. So you got a first question says uh, from Justin Boos. Question, I just found out that low spacing on the flat hard helps a lot with blending and rendering. Can you, can I get your blessing on this discovery? It's <laughs> yeah, a know, strange question. You know, like, it's all about how you deal in uh, with your brushes. So a student, someone asked me, I don't know if she was a student or not, uh, but she's someone at the the edge control asked a very similar question was like or not a question you didn't ask a question but made a s statement about like how did i how do i blend um so well with my brushes right and i explained to them it's like well this is something unfortunately i can't really teach because i could push very lightly right i could push real light and i could push super hard right mm -hmm. and everything in between right i have really good control of my pen pressure all right, and this brush has forty percent flow, so it makes makes some really powerful blending happen. And having uh, some spacing, like twenty five percent, is good because it adds some texture, and it adds a little bit of softness to the brush. So when you have forty percent 
some spacing, and you have the ability to push lightly. Um, it just it just really becomes a powerhouse because I can do some crazy stuff like here. Let me let me darken this whole painting stuff. So I could do something like this where I can like basically make this whole bottom jaw lighter without really being destructive. You see that? And this is something that allows me to control my values really well. And then vice versa, I can go and make things darker without being entirely destructive. And so a combination of that and uh, a reasonable brush, yeah, you can you can do quite a crazy amount of stuff, I would say. So yeah, I mean, if you're if flat brush or not, it's really about the control. Um, I would say, obviously, if I'm dealing with a hard brush like this, this will be very hard to blend with because it's... There is no opacity jitter, so of course having some jitter is great. And then the next question is, do you have any control over that jitter? Now I mean, here, let me just widen this. All right, we have a related request from Stephen Howard: obese monster eating McDonald's or some other fast food because monsters got to eat too. Monsters got to eat. Okay. All right. So then I need to open up his mouth a bit. All right. Somebody, cool. uh, the next one. Yeah, Megan. Uh, Megan Matt Maxted. Excuse me for these names. Um, says You're he needs to be wearing a tux. A tux. Okay, he's fat, and he's wearing a tux. I can do that. All right. Next. Uh, Calvin Franco says maybe a tank from Left for Dead. <laughs> Ashley Kitchen says, what about making this uh, this bro's body kind of robotic with fleshy bits hanging over such? Some of them are reasonable. Some of them aren't. I see oh, I pierced and chains. Blood splatters. Piercings and chains. All right, hold on. <laughs> I, uh, what is this guy's job that he wears a suit and he's got pierced? And I know, right? Does he just murder people? This is going to get pretty hectic. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's stop there. It's kind of rough. Sure. And if you see any others, just copy them um, into like some sort of notepad or something so you can read it back later. Yeah, I got you. And then uh, if anyone else, just hold on to your suggestions until I get kind of at least some of these in there. And then we'll all say your suggestions again. Um, but you guys can ask questions, though. In fact, I am going to ask some questions to Kaylin. Oh, what a turn of events. I'm signing off. Oh, what the? No. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> so, <laughs> why, why does it sound like a shit? Like, I can hear your computer getting shut down, which is very unlikely. How is that Don't shut down. Don't you dare shut down on me. <laughs> Kalen's shutting down his computer. You have like a. Yeah. Ryzen? Yeah, I want to cancel my internet. Yeah, yep. I'll just right now. Just cancel your internet. <laughs> what? No piercings. Yeah, let me get to that chains too got that um so yeah uh my question to you caitlin is what is the greatest tool that you use for your environment painting and i don't mean like a brush i mean like tool in every sense of the word from your it could be perspective it could be colors it could be values like what <laughs> is that just to give you a give you um perspective of what I would say for characters I would say the ability to let go of the painting right um, stop thinking of the painting and start thinking about what you're painting you know what I mean that is the greatest tool as a character artist now if someone would ask me what's the greatest tool as a character painter then I would say you need to get your anatomy in proportions right you get what I'm saying yeah so, they, so, so you're kind of talking about a physical environment and, and it could be a physical tool too, if you really like. If you say ruler, then I'm all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> T square, yeah, a thing that you but bought just, one quarter and then like never used again. Yeah, but I'm I'm really curious. I wanted to know what you think about that. Um, it's the biggest tool in terms of environment design. And it doesn't have to be the answer that you think is the end all. Just something that you think is pretty important. Uh, well, for me, I'm a big fan of of composition. That's where I like to. I would say composition and, and how you group your values, just because environments by nature are very complex. So you have to be good at grouping things together, and you have to be good at kind of indicating detail uh -huh. without actually putting it in, especially if you want to be able to do work, you know, or do work efficiently. 
so for me, I think the biggest the biggest uh, struggle or the biggest like thing that I'm always thinking about is how to group a bunch of values together, whether I'm painting a forest or a mountain or a bunch of buildings in the, in the far back. Like, how do I group those together so it makes it feel like there's detail and it feels like something's happening there, but in an instance, it's a few brush strokes. So I think for me, it's like um, positive and negative shapes and just overall grouping of values. And I think that kind of, in a sense, kind of ties back into kind of perspective and also little bits of things in terms of composition. Mm-hmm. But I think if you can group your values very, very well, and this is why I think like a lot of traditional painters are like the shit to me. That's who I like to look at. Because when they when they're painting things, usually they're painting stuff sometimes even outside. Like they're painting it, you know, on the spot, a la prima. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have to be really good at grouping their values. So kind of like eliminating things that you don't need. It's kind of like life drawing. That's why I like life drawing as well. Um, I feel like life drawing uh, almost helps that helps that idea out uh, idea out because essentially when you're life drawing, um, depending on the time that you have, uh, usually you start off with like a one minute pose and then five minutes, ten minutes. Um, you're looking at the model and you're trying to look at a, a complex form that is the human body and look at it and say, okay, what do I need? What can I what can I strip away from this? But it still reads as what the character is doing. And so that kind of um, happens a lot when you paint environments. You're looking at a, at a crazy environment that's full of complex detail and colors, and you're saying, okay, what do I need? What can I take away from this environment to paint? But it still is readable to what I, to, to what I want to communicate. And so I think that's where the grouping of values, um, how you're grouping your values and how you're composing your uh, painting is, like, I think, very, very imperative. I think when, whenever I deal with students... A lot of them like have good painting skills, but then just how they're overall grouping their values or how they're kind of arranging their their shapes and stuff kind of like makes their job a lot harder. So that's that's kind of my thing in a nutshell. It's like cool, sweet. Colin, life drawings. Yeah, I actually thought about going life drawing some more. Life drawing is good. Good for you. you should too. life drawing is awesome. I oh. try to do it like almost every every weekend. By the way, I think Dan wanted to jump in on this. Again? So keep your eyes open for that. Um. Yeah, I'll let him know. Just tell. Just tell Dan. Just to message me. Or if you can just message him right now. I I'll, I just message him a little bit, but then oh shoot, I need to get out of. All right. Let me just let me just do it real quick. But anyways, is there any questions, homie? Yeah, I got everything. Uh, first question from Thomas Schaffer. What's up, Thomas? Can uh, can you show us? Can you show how you draw silhouette thumbnails? Uh, sure. I can do that. So, give me a second. Let me just try to... In fact, let's just hold off on that. Let me uh, yeah. just remind me. If I don't okay. do it... Hey, if I don't do it in the stream, because for whatever reason I forgot, or we forgot about it, I apologize, man, ahead of time. But, uh, I got I'll, some quick questions. But what I'll do is, uh, in, in the meantime, I'll just make that the point of the next stream that I do. I'll just start off with that. So if you don't catch that stream, if you just catch the pre-recorded one, you should be able to see it. But I think I'll do it. I think you guys can remind me. All right. Kyle C. Towns says, what kind of tablet are you using? Uh, Intuos Pro. I'm not sure which model. Hold on, let me look at it. I think it's the recent one. It's Yeah, it's Intuos 5. Just the all black with, like, little... It's actually the Intuos 5 Touch, which is now the Pro. They're relatively the same. That reminds me, I need to upgrade, but these things are expensive. All right, and then a follow-up to that from Michael Cow, or Koo, whatever. Uh, do you prefer to work on Cintiq or Intos, and why? In, uh, Intos, because Intos feels more like a paint, like I'm painting, where Cintiq feels like I'm drawing, and that's really what it, it comes down to. Um, it has nothing to do with one tool is better than the other. It's all preference. So, for instance, uh, uh, you know, my good bud Dan Levisi, he loves using the Cintiq. But that's because he's a, he's like a drawer and he's like drawn most of his life and it makes the most sense to him, you know. He needs to have that like connection. Where I didn't grow up drawing, so it was easy for me to to just adopt some some tool. And it's it's Intuos was that tool. And the beautiful the beautiful thing with the Intuos though, going back to the painting stuff, is that when you think about a painter, a painter sometimes doesn't even they don't put their face right up to their painting. You know what I mean? Like they usually have some distance between them and their painting. And if you paint with the Intos, it assimilates that, right? Like, I mean, yes, it's disconnected, right? 
but it's it's kind of like the way that painters like to have it anyway. And I have like a, a coworker that I used to work with, Mateus Virasol. Uh, Same way, he loves the Intos for very similar reasons, you know. And he's an amazing painter, uh, one of the best that I know of. Um, so I know people that are drawers that use Intos, and people that are painters that use Cintiqs. You know, it's really you got to try it for yourself. There's really nothing I can say that I don't. I mean, that's a good starting point of how you can perceive whether you like it or not, but until you try it, it really is impossible for me to give any solid advice on that, right? It's very expensive hardware, though, so I'd highly recommend you, you try it for a good period of time before you yourself are convinced. Indeed. <coughs> Indeed. Was there another question outside of that? Yeah, there's one more question, and then there's some requests. So okay. The, que- the question's kind of towards me, but... It's yeah, from uh, it. Kyle McFarlane. It says someone said that they were starting. What does it say? Someone said that they were starting their streams outside with the laptop setup. I'm intrigued to know who that is. Uh, that'd be me. My name is Michael Young, and not necessarily outside because I don't know a way to get internet, <laughs> like in the field. Um, I assume with a phone, but I don't have a plan like that. The point. The point of that was that if I ever leave the house, um, which I should, uh, I should still be able to make videos and stream and paint and everything. So. I don't want to be tied down to my room with my like setup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Hope that answers your question. All right. Yeah. On to the more requests for your painting. Okay. Uh, you got the tuxedo, and then there is the obese. I'm doing the hamburger right now. There's still some more stuff I need to do with the sci-fi parts, the fleshy parts. I'm doing right now. I have like some sort of like stomach. Girl yeah, it's, thing. it's coming together really cool. Some str- like so, like as he eats, the food just gets like comes out of his stomach. Yeah, so. what if? Okay, I'm not gonna add. Yeah, what 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 is it? You can do something. Uh, okay, I was gonna say um, maybe translucent stomach. You can see Ugh. some of the burgers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll think uh, about that. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll through these without saying the names, just because there's a couple of them, and you might want to pick and choose what you want to do. So someone says, yeah, McDouble in the tentacle hand. Looks like you already got that. Uh, somebody <laughs> says, do a woman. Uh, somebody else says, super massive and flabby. Looks like you got that. Give him mech attachments. Um, even better, give the creature female features. So that's two people. Um, he needs a tattered hamburger costume. That's messed up. Add a monocle. Uh, give him some sick armor with a with fla- uh, fatty flesh growing over it. Um, have him lick an ice cream. This guy's double doing it. Uh, make his skin more wet. Eating a lot of hamburgers is a huge job. Uh, and then the final one says, have a trail of McDonald's slaves serving up the grub. Make them really small too to show the scale. As soon as he said that, I was thinking I should make them really small. And then he said it. Or she said it. Yeah, um, it was Trisha. Yeah, I'm down with that. All right. We'll see what's up. I'm just going to keep painting. Have a good time with this. All right. So, yeah, I mean, any movies you guys are excited about or games that are just coming out? Because uh, for me, like, uh, my buddy hooked me up with Legion, and we started playing Legion, which is really cool. Uh, I forgot, like, WoW changed so much, man. I only played a little bit. I haven't played a lot. Oh, and I, pl- I played Overwatch competitive matches. I've already lost the first three. It's freaking hard, dude. Oh, people poor don't, guy. People don't listen. <laughs> they just don't. They rage so hard. Well, you gotta play with the team, though. I like, think yeah. so. Man. I realize the, the contrast. Like, every game, I'm, like, rolling. I'm rolling fools. Um, but then my team is just... I, I was watching one of the team uh, teammates of mine. And the, it was a diva, and she was just, like, running in a wall for, like, a good few seconds. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, look up. Look up, bro. <laughs> no, we don't have a chance. Yeah, you got you to gotta play with, like, people that you know. Like, I never, I will never um, touch a uh, a competitive match. Like, I'll look at the team, and I'll be like, are we doing competitive? And then we just look at our team, and we're like, yeah, no, it's not a good idea. I'm not trying to lose my points. Cause that's, that's, a, that's what kind of sucks about it is that, if you lose, you immediately go down like one point. <laughs> You're like, man, like that kind of sucks. So that's why it's like you have to make sure you have like a legit team because if you don't, sure. you might as well just be pub stomping. Sure, sure, sure. It's worth it. It relies a lot on like yeah, the, knowing how to counter. 
Yeah, that's like, that's hard. And uh, well, just making sure like good team composition is like key. Um, you gotta you kind of because you kind of have to like I have people that I play with like a good amount, and we all kind of know like what our role is. Like, like I'm I'm more of a yeah. support guy. Like I'll throw like a May or um or a soldier, like kind of a soldier, like someone that can kind of get in behind and just. Or get in, get get in behind the, our team and just kind of help, kind of create chaos, or just like kind of make, you know, just help support people. Because I'm not very good, like in terms of, like getting all the kills and stuff. But I mean, you see, you, you got to have that that team composition where people can say, "Hey, I need to go this class," and like, "Hey, I need to go this class." Or, we need to all switch to this, like because you don't. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard. I forgot in competitive play you can't do that, but this isn't kind of anything. If you're just pub stomping too, like, you just got to know. Like how your how your team plays because I, I tried doing it a couple of times where it's just me and I just join up you know I'm just like hey I'm just join up in a in a in a ranked match and it can and, and it, it can it's kind of it's kind of a coin flip either you have like a really good team and you just happen to be that extra person that's a part of it and you're gonna win like no matter what or you're on a shitty team and you're like f this I want to choke somebody out because you're just like just wasting your time. But it can go either way. But what do you think of that new Will Smith movie? The new uh, yeah, it looks great. Yeah. It looks really good. Hey, what movie is that? A beautiful or Collateral Beauty? I mean, Collateral Beauty. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to look that up. Basically, the premise is Will Smith's character. I think is like some sort of. I'm not sure exactly exact occupation, but some sort of motivator of other people or some sort of like influence, right? And he makes a comment about you know there's three things that people care about in life, which is uh, time, love, and death. You know, everybody wants to have time to be with the people they care about. People want to find love so they're not alone. And then people fear death because, you know, regrets or whatever. And so then he he wrote, he he's going through some trauma in his own life, right, whatever that may be. And so he does something weird, which is he writes letters to both time, or to all three, time, love, and death. And then all of a sudden they manufacture themselves as real people. So kind of like a father. It's like the, like a Scrooge, uh, or what is it, the cr- Christmas Carol? Yeah, Ghost Before Christmas. Or Ghost Before Christmas, not Christmas Carol. What the, yeah, go- no, no, that no, is Christmas Carol. Am I right? Am I wrong? I forget. It's been done a lot of times. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't even know anymore. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. But like more modern, I guess. Uh, and it looks good. It looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I'm excited for it. I'm trying to think of other movies that are coming out that I well Let's see. What about that uh, new Call of Duty game? The new Call of Duty. Sorry, uh, I was yawning. Uh, uh, Call of Duty is kind of. Are you cool. snoring? What, what? <coughs> Sorry. Get out of here! What? <laughs> yeah, Come on, that looks kinda, cool. It's kind of dead right now, man. Like, no, no I've never been a fan of Call of Duty. I think I stopped playing Call no. of Duty after Modern Warfare. After the first one, um, it became very clear that they hit their you know, it's the same with Halo. Like, uh, yeah. after Halo 2, probably, I started... I just, uh... It's just... It, it's not that the games are bad. Let me, re- re- let me rephrase this. It's not that the games are bad. It's just that I've played that game already. You know what I mean? It's the same yeah, with, like, WoW. Feeling. Same with WoW. Like, when I started playing WoW again, I felt like really... I felt like I was back in it. But it's, like, completely different. So it probably makes more sense for me to play Call of Duty maybe on the, ne- the next Call of Duty. Because by that time, it might be so different. That I'll remember it being, you know what I mean? Well, I think I mean I'm a big COD fan because I mean that's what I got. I played a lot of, I played every single COD. But I feel like nowadays, the COD community kind of ruins it because yeah, they they ask for too many things. They go, it's the same shit all the time, and then they go, and then they go, okay, well we're gonna give you boost jumping, boost sliding, um, exosuits, so you can do crazy ass shit. And they go, well now the game is too hard to play. The skill gap is too high. And they go, well, now we want, like, boots on the ground, right? And then you, then you do boots uh, on the ground. See. And they're like, well, now it's too boring. And then, like, it's like Dude. they never know what they want. And so that's kind of the hard part, too. And I think I think they've literally done every possible idea. Like, I, I feel like they kind of exhausted the series a little bit. So I think people are just kind of waiting on the remake. Like, personally, I'm not even probably going to buy Ghosts, even though, like, it's probably going to be a good game. It's probably going to be fun. But um, I'm kind of just waiting for them to remake Modern Warfare 2. Like once they once they remake it and put it on the console, like I will play the shit out of that game. Cause that's that's the game I used to play with Jason Hill, where like he would just get so mad, and it used to be so fun and just playing with him and just like just playing like cheesy classes. Yeah. Cause the game was so broken that like the game was so broken that like it was kind of balanced in a way, 
And so yeah. I think I think like the most classiest one was Modern Warfare One. But then Modern Warfare Two like made it super broad out where you could do a lot of this like stupid shit that would like drive people insane. And I you think, can noob tube at spawn. Yeah, you can noob tube at spawns, you could just do one man army. Like there's a lot Classic. of stupid things that were just like there it was really overpowered, but it was but it was really fun just to just to do it because you could just do a lot of funny things. And so I remember just playing Jason all the time and just playing like, you know, lightweight marathon, like a commando, and then just like you just see me just knife him from like thirty yards out and you hear Jason go like, What the f <laughs> and then just sign out because <laughs> he's just like just so over that. it. Yeah, because then he like, just or like he would you he would hear like his girlfriend at the time and be like, Hey, uh Jason went out for a smoke. <laughs> he's really he's kind of like, you know you 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 would hear the headphones drop and then you'd just be like, uh, Jason? This is great, like, dude. Because, like, he's the kind of guy that he'd play a sniper, which is a little bit harder to do. Yeah. So he was, like, playing, like, a class that, like, is hard to do. It's not the most easiest thing. And I would just play the easiest class, and I would just beat him. And and, and it's always, like, drive him insane. And it would be a fun time just, like, just playing Modern Warfare 2, I think. That that would be really, really cool. But I don't I don't know. Like, I'm not sure what their issue is. I, I think a lot of those, I mean, Titanfall actually looks pretty cool, too. I played Titanfall a little bit. But first person shooters in general, I think, are kind of. I don't know. I think people are kind of waiting for that new thing, and I don't know what that new thing's going to be. That new thing Overwatch. is Overwatch. That's what people are switching yeah. over yeah. to. Yeah, it's Overwatch. Yeah, like I play Overwatch right now, and like, um, I, I, I think I, uh, I think I, t- I talked to someone about this recently because they're like, "Hey, man, you haven't even been playing as much," and I was like, "Yeah, I've been playing Overwatch a little bit more. It's kind of a just a easier thing." And he's like, "Why do you like it so much?" And I'm like, "Because uh, it's kind of easy. I don't have to think." And I was like. He's like, yeah, I never thought about that. Like, you kind of just get it. Um, there isn't much to really have to like. Yeah, this catch matchup stuff like that, but the game is very, very easy. Um, it's they they did it they did it well enough where someone can be really good at it, but an average person can play it and still be okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because they could play like a support class, right? And they can win. Yeah, so there's a there's all these there's or all Reinhardt. These, and just yeah, like there's all these hammer. there's all these kind of like there's always a there's always a place for someone depending on their skill gap. Uh, depending on their skill level, there's, there, there's a place for you that you can do something and and probably be Contribute. a contributor, or effective member of the team. So I think because of that, like I don't have to think. Like and and granted, like I have like a pretty high like KD with like with May, um, but May just makes sense to me, so that's why I play her. But I don't have to think as hard. Like when I'm playing like when I'm playing like Call of Duty, like like Search and Destroy, like I have to have my Astros in. Like I have to be like yeah, really, you have to, I have to be making sure I can sound whore people that I can understand like what's happening. I'm looking at the map. I'm looking at all these things, seeing seeing where like my friends have died, and then figuring out like where to plant the bomb, like where do I hear footsteps. Like I'm that guy, I hear a twig, and I just look to the right corner and start start firing at the forest. Like Dude, that was a squirrel, and I'm like, no, I thought it was somebody, right? And it's like it's like there's so much strategy because there's so many maps too, and then it just it's just really really kind of stressful a little bit, and I don't want to get stressed out. Same thing with Street Fighter. Street Fighter sometimes the reason I don't play it is because I'm like I don't want to think. And it's my fault too, because I, I play a really I play a really low tier character, so then it makes it harder to have to know like matchups and stuff like that. And I'm like, I should just play like a high tier character, so I don't have to think. But I think Overwatch, like you can kind of zone out and just play that game. And even if you win, like or lose, like people don't uh, talk shit really, because you, you can't hit the, you can't hit other team. So that's kind of nice. So I think that's nice too. Like they did a very good job, because people are like uh, like inherently assholes. And so, like, yeah. if you lose, they're just like, "Yeah, bitch, fucking whooped you, fuck your mom," right? <laughs> but then, like, if you lose, that's not it just it just kind of goes to the next thing, and then it's over. You're like, ah, you get him next time. I feel like when you lose an Overwatch, like, you always feel like, all right, like, we'll get him better next luck time. next time. Yeah, you don't, you don't really, you don't really, I don't really get too bummed out when I lose in uh in Overwatch, unless you're like Danny with VC, because that guy will will totally get bummed out. But, like, um. <laughs> But I think in like Street Fighter and COD, like I get I'll get mad. Like I will get like hated if I lose to somebody. Mother, goddamn yeah. fucker! Yeah, exactly. And yeah. It's like you just hear like a baby. Are you are you still playing? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I think I'm um, the captain now. I'm the captain. <laughs> I am I think, the captain now. Who's the captain? I am both the captain. Of you? Y'all both the captain. <laughs> now I'm one captain. He's a captain right now because it's his stream. But if it's oh, my true. stream, then I'm the captain. No, I'm All right. the captain. Well, um, <laughs> I was gonna say one of the one of the things that's the most annoying in Call of Duty it has to be getting shot in the back because it, it's so hard to like turn around and retaliate. Whereas in Overwatch, like I don't, it depends on the hero. Like McCree can get behind you and you're done. But 
like certain heroes like a Winston hops on you, you might have a chance to like do something about it. You know, well, that, and I, I like that. That's what I liked about Halo as well. Well, that that I don't mind if someone. I'd actually I prefer that because that to me rewards good players that have good positioning. Because I've never been like the best like Twitch kind of player in terms of COD, so like I have to rely on like me having proper cover, like being in the in the better position where I have the advantage, and and I never engage. I think Black Ops, like the very first Black Ops, really solidified that for me. Like, I did really well in Black Ops because uh, there wasn't any BS in that game. And it was just gun skill. Like, it wasn't necessarily who could, like, who could get turned on real quickly. Um, it's more so, like, who had who had the upper hand. And if you were smart and you played the game like, like you should, then you would be fine. That's why I think Advanced Warfare people didn't like it. Because the game was so crazy with exosuits that you could get be, you can get shot from behind and then literally just like boost jump in the air and turn around real quickly and just like just own somebody and you're like what like I totally was like I had I had the jump on you so it, it can go either way actually but I think in Overwatch that does that does fit that 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 game style a lot better because if you always get get in behind people then that means like people like Genji and whatever and Winston will be like OP because they can get in behind you really easily. So I think in those kind of games, it, it works. Like having like a certain kind of health bar. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like in that game, like it does make sense that certain characters have more health or, or certain characters can get behind you, but it's not always an end-all, be-all. So I think that game is very has a very good kind of balance in a way. Or they're always kind of balancing it out. Like so. All right. It really depends. Any other questions, friends? Was there anyone that had any questions or even There's a... I, I think, see two I still, questions. I still... I think I missed a few. What was some of the suggestions again? I did the, oh, yeah, the slaves. I'll do that next. All right. Go ahead. Go on with the questions. All right. Thomas Schaffer says, what kind of workload should people expect when they first get into the game studio uh, as a junior artist? Um, depends on where you're working. I don't, I, I don't like answering that question, not because I don't really think there's a good answer. Uh, I don't like answering it because I don't want to give you false expectations. Yeah, every studio is different. Like, yeah, every studio is different. You get coffee, and some are going to make you like. Nah, st- nobody's going to make you get coffee as a junior artist. <laughs> you're going to yep. you're going to be doing art, but 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 Galen's right in terms of there is extremes. Like some studios will make you just draw coffee, right? They make you just draw like the props, like coffee, <laughs> you know, and just boxes and stuff, and that'll be like your whole job for like a year, right? Until you start to demonstrate your quality and your uh, your. Uh, you know, basically represent like your actual ability to do more, um, but then some studios will start you off drawing like cool stuff, and in terms of how much, some studios might want you to do it like in a month or so. You know, over a period of iterations and feedback, um, and other studios want you to have it done yesterday. You know, and you have to like sleep, sleep in or sleep over at the studio overnight. Uh, and some studios have a combination of both, or some days you're just not doing much, and then the next day it's like all hands on deck, like fire. There's a fire in the building, you know, you all have to try to f- put it out. So I think the best thing you can do for yourself is try to see if you can get a a, a portfolio piece done in within a a week or two, including iterations, thumbnails, sketches... If you could do that in a week, then you, you're pretty capable of working anywhere, really. Uh, and that's to say if it's good, too. No, not just like a loose sketch, like something that's comparable to the people who work in the industry. And that's that's just to prepare you for the most extreme cases. Because then it, at that at that level, then you can, you'll can you be able to do even a more lighter of work. In fact, some, some friends of mine um, are really good, and they get jobs where they don't make them do much. And they get very bored, you know? And so, yeah, I'd say that's my advice. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just just have good work. And then do some research of the studios and how they work before you apply for them or before you go reach out to them in however capacity you do, which I highly recommend doing in person. Going to events and meeting people in person is so valuable. Anyway. All right. So Billy Martin says, have you had a chance to watch Narcos yet? Yeah, I watched the first season, and we just started watching the second season, but I went to bed early. All right, and then James Martin says, ever consider leaving L.A. area? I never lived in L.A. area. I live in That's your answer. 
Yeah. I've already considered it by not living there. <laughs> I'm close enough there that I can drive there. It takes about an hour. Okay, Bo... Excuse me, but uh, Bo Yang? Zoo? Oh, Bo Yang. He says he could use some hair. Be a pretty boy. <laughs> What's up, Bo Yang? How you been? Bo Yang's freaking uh, badass. He's one of the, the best uh, artists I've met in my life. That's he, dope. He's one of those people that, like... He's, like, on the cutting edge. He's like, did you know you could do this? And I'm like, what? And then he, like, makes... He, he, he does, like, origami, and then it turns into a 3D print. And I'm like, what the... Uh, last time I talked to that guy, he was, like, learning some networking or some sort of programming. Have you learned it? Are you a programmer now? If not, it's still cool. I still respect you. And I will give this person hair. Just for okay. you. Okay. Uh, another question. Ian... Miley says, what's a good way to find an internship? Uh, I do not know, because I've never got one. Just look online. Uh, I would say, again, I would assume the same thing. Just meet the recruiters and they're like, tell them that you're willing to do an internship. Uh, sometimes, yeah, online they'll, like Blizzard or some studios will be like, hey, you know, we're <laughs> opening up positions for internships. <laughs> And then you just be available, and then the next the next thing you need to have is good work. Yeah, I think some people kind of think that internships sometimes that it doesn't require you to be good; it just requires you just to apply, and they just like randomly select someone. They're like, "All right, oh, yeah, they're gonna hire the best." <laughs> yeah, they're gonna hire the best. So it's like just think of an internship like you are applying for an actual job because that's what it will potentially turn into um, if you do very well. Um, more times than not, the internship if you do really really well. They'll consider bringing you on. So if you can't do the work, like as a re as a regular artist, um, you're not going to be able to do it as an intern either, right? So it's like just be, right. be dope. I have uh, some information for internship stuff. Uh, being a college student that just graduated, oh, one of the re one of the requirements that we had was to have an internship, so we had to find one. Um, and I personally didn't have a good experience, but I'll go into that in a second. Uh, the way that we were able to find internships the best way, I live in Seattle, the Seattle area, so there's a lot of events going on. If you go to those events, uh, it's likely you'll meet people. So I went to a Unity mixer where they were talking about like some stuff I have no clue about, but it was Unity things. Um, I, I went like, oh, this is going to be cool, but it was a lot of like, uh, I think the, the talk was about like multiplayer, how to bring that into your game, and like microtransactions and stuff, so had nothing to do with me. But I did network and meet somebody and was able to get an internship from it. Um, I did the internship for about 136 hours as my requirement over the course of like 15 weeks. And I would say internships are awesome, but be careful. You could find uh, some people that aren't super competent. For example, the people, all I'll say is the people that I interned for uh, worked at Microsoft as accountants and thought that since they worked at Microsoft's, uh, Microsoft, they can make their own game. And they had no idea what art was, like how to do it. They, when it came to, to doing like concepts, uh, we were trying to do concepts and they were like, no, 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 go straight to the 3D model. And we had to <laughs> use like the student version of Maya. Um, so I'm like, you guys can't use this like for your game, right? Put it in the game right now. Yeah, it was, it was quite awful, but I had to go through it. Not um, right in the game. So I would just say like, don't think internships are like this awesome thing all the time. Uh, you could have a bad internship. Kind of just gauge whoever it is that's offering it to you and try to learn how to sniff out bullshit. Um, but all in all, even if it was a bad experience, it was a good experience because now I know like red flags. Yeah, who was it? Was it you that was telling me about this? Caitlin, about that one student that was like like a dictator to the other students and was like trying to fire other what students the hell? from their project, which was just a project <laughs> for the for the, for the class? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I did have a student that was, um, that did, but then again, like, he was kind of rightfully so because he was doing everything himself. And and he was just like, it's one of those, it, it was No, 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 not that. I'm talking about a completely different scenario. Oh, no, I Where this person wasn't doing anything. Because I think you're talking about, I, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and that person, yes, you're right. But I'm talking about this person was just like, you know, why aren't you modeling these things? And he's like, what are you talking about? I need time. Like, what? You don't need time. You got to do it now. He's like, what? 
dude, what, <laughs> this is fucking class. He's like, dude, you're never going to make an industry with this attitude. And he's like, wait, wait Damn, a minute. Dude. What are you doing? Uh, that probably- you know? <laughs> and, he's like, and, and it was like, what? I'm the art director. Like, like, this is what they do. And the guy literally was doing nothing for the project. And the, the team was just like, this guy. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, you got to watch out for certain people. I mean, in this internship, you're supposed to have a professional as a mentor. Uh, that's one of like the requirements in order to do it. And what they did was they took one of uh, the students, my friend Greg, and made him the like lead artist. And he's taking the internship. So we didn't have anybody with actual guidance. Um, that was awful. And they also had no idea what deadlines were. They tried to set, like, we have to have this game ready in one month. Here's our deadline. And it's like, you you know, we're uh, like four interns in college. It takes a game studio, like, a long time to make a game, dude. <clears throat> yeah. You guys are super unrealistic. Okay, but I, I want to leave this off on a better note. So the advice I would give is to go on uh, meetup.com and look in your area for events and just go to those events. Well, that's the best the best thing you can do best thing you can do is just be polite, be a nice person. Uh even if your work isn't the greatest, um you obviously work on it, like try to continue working on that. But people will really gravitate to you if you're polite. Um that's my best advice. I forgot about meetup. meetup.com is a great site. Yeah, meetup is is actually. That's where we got our events. Sweet. Cool. I knew there was a reason we brought you on here. I was thinking about us. I don't know about this guy. I don't know about this Michael guy. <laughs> all right. All right. You've uh, secured your position here. You've secured your position. I will yeah. allow you to stay. You got another question. <laughs> oh, look at that. You're getting right on it. Well, getting I mean, right do you want to take the question? Yeah, dude. Okay. I'm trying to compliment you, and you're just like, shut up. We'll get more questions. Down to Pro- business. Proving my point. Even further. All right, sorry, good. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Okay, Daniel says, "Hey, Anthony, are you going to be releasing another book?" Uh, most likely not, just because it was just super difficult, and I realized that it was hard to do, and I'm still working towards getting it done. And so it's just one of those things. Is like, I've discovered <laughs> if I do, if I ever do, um, I'll just do it. And then when it's done, it's done. Yeah. I'm not going to go any other route. Um, because that was the problem. Because when I f- first started, it wasn't done. Uh, and then that took a while to get finished. And then once I got it finished, then I had to learn how to do all the other stuff, like shipping it out. And then, because all this stuff was pretty much, I was doing on my own. But luckily for me, you know, I have really good friends. So like this next roundabout, a lot of my friends helped me out get it done. But in, in hindsight, I've learned a very good lesson. I saw... um. I met somebody at Croatia who had a very better, had a much better strategy and, and overall tactic, which was they did their first book on their own, like just with their own money, with their own time, and they did a very small, reasonable print. It was like a hundred, and then they did it, and it was a success. And then they did the second one, and it was like two hundred, and that was a success, right? And then they're like, all right, now I'm going to use like a, a crowd f- source or crowdfunding site. But at that point, that, that person was super experienced. You know what I mean? Um, that's not what happened to me. So if I ever do another one, it'll just be because I, I truly believe I should do one. You know? But right now I don't feel that. I don't have the inkling to do that. I think if I were to do one, I would probably do a uh, digital one. You know, not a physical one, because I have a lot of international fans, right? And then just give them a digital one where it'll be higher res enough that they can print a lot of the stuff that they want and make their own, like, posters of any size. That makes more sense to me than anything. <coughs> uh, I like Vertex. Like my a friend who does, like, uh, Vertex, which is, like, a digital-only art book, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Andy Salmanas, excuse me if I get that wrong, says pretty much he's asking like what brushes you have um, and if he can download them somewhere. Yeah, you can download them. Go to my website. And I just got like an assortment of brushes, nothing too crazy. This whole painting has been painted with just a round brush. So it's just all about that round brush, man. 
That round brush, though. That round brush, though. All right, Ashley wants this as a mini print. Um, Iron Cutter <laughs> says, AJ, how did you get so buff and awesome? This right here, this thing that I'm actually painting. This gross yeah, they want to. They want to print. All right. Well, here's what I'll do for you guys. I'll uh, I'll save it and I'll make a high res version, and then you guys can print it out. And if you do print it, I want to see photos. <laughs> I want to see proof. Um, buff and awesome. Uh, I used to be pretty buff, but I stopped working out because I started getting these really bad headaches, uh, and they're starting to go away. I think it's because I've been working less hard. Uh, I've been, you know, doing things that I, that make me happy, like. Uh, hanging out with my children, being with my wife, and then like working out a little bit, uh, playing video games here and there. That's that's really nice. It's just like not constantly on is really helpful to me. I think it's been really helpful to my health. You know, because before I was like constantly on, right? Like constantly thinking about all kinds of things. But now I'm not as much anymore. And then also hanging out with people I love really helps. Cause I wasn't doing that much either. So I think. Uh, I think I'm going to start working out again because I haven't had really severe headaches since for a few weeks now. Um, it's great to hear. Yeah, which is really cool, which is really good. So that movie, that Will Smith movie, even hit me harder. Like, Those are like the three things that I think about all the time. <laughs> you know, so when I saw it, I was like, just struck a chord like right away. You know what I mean? In fact, I thought about it. And I thought about putting together some sort of article because I used to write little articles too. Um, yeah, I remember that on the Tumblr. Yeah, I think I'll go back to that. And I, I had an idea for an article, which was to to ask yourself every day, what is the most important things in your life? And make a list of those things, right? So, for instance, like, if I were to say, oh, yeah, let me, that'd be, that's easy. Family, you know, friends, you know, my career, right? And then, like, let's say there's some other things. And then look at that list, right? And then ask yourself, out of all the things on this list, what are you actually putting all your time and effort into? Because this is the list that you want to believe is what you're doing, right? Like you want to believe that this is the things that you're actually genuinely spending time and effort on. But are you actually doing that? You know what I mean? And the reality was that I was spending all my time on my career, even though I said I, this is what's more important to me. You know? And then that, that like flipped the switch for me. You know, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, what are you doing?" You know, and there, you'll hear a lot of people, uh, very successful people, make these same claims. But the reality is that they spend all their time and effort on things that they actually don't, like genuinely, that are lower on their list of things that they actually say that they want to care about. You know, and so I want to make an article about that, and then, like some tools that you can ask yourself. Um, because I get it, you know, you you want to make a living, you got to you got to make that cheddar. I get it. But is it really that valuable to you? Cuz we have friends that are really really wealthy, you know? And at the same time we don't see the happiness that like, you know, me and my wife have. Like, me and my wife are very very happy together. You know, we get mad of course. But there's moments that we're just very happy. You know? And those moments are more like those like it's like eighty five percent of the time that's how it is usually, which is a good percentage to have uh my kids love being around me, you know, even when I was hardly around, right, so it's like it's changing it's like it's nice to be like I let my daughter play overwatch for instance today, and it was kind of it was again I let her play once already before, and I let her play it again today, and she was like rolling around with Lucio and like wrecking fools. Because I let her play in the practice range, and she was just shooting robots, and then I put her in the AI custom match, and she was she was actually holding up her own. She was, like, shooting these people dead. Uh, I put them on easy, though, but she's, like, learning. Oh, that's still impressive. She's, like, three, right? Uh, she's four, turning four. five okay. in December. Oh. Yeah, so so my point is is that, that that makes me happy, you know, seeing my son get into, like, Pokemon, like, that's really cool. Um, you know, having opportunities to start trying to make a difference. Uh, I have teenage boys, and one of them I really care about, you know, and he's going through some stuff, and I talked to him recently about, like, you know, let's let's find ways to hang out with each other, you know? Because I can do that now. There's no real excuse on my end for why I can't do that, right? 
and so like uh yeah i want to get back to writing articles and talking about real stuff and helping people out in a different way because i think a lot of education out there right now is just like you know like do this do that and you'll be successful and you'll make lots of money and it's like great but is that truly like what people want you know and i don't think so i think most people generally don't want that they just don't know uh usually they don't know what they want uh, or they've been taught or you know programmed to to want these things because think about it like you know make more money is a cool thing but what is what do you want so much money so you can buy more things you know and i'm a victim of this too and i think it's a it's a big problem and because there's some people that live very modestly and have you know not everything in the world but they're very very happy and that's that's a that's a pretty big deal, I think. I'd say you can kind of sum that up in like, don't try to be happy later. Try to be happy right now. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's exactly. <laughs> you just paraphrase that whole <laughs> 20, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> twenty minute lecture I just gave in like a sentence. Yeah, no, but it was good. It's absolutely the truth. There's a really really good story that I always tell my students. I'll, I won't tell it here though. Uh, just because I don't want to bore people, but like um, sometimes it comes up, like this this story that I want to tell. And it, it was told to me. It was about a fisherman. But the moral of the story was basically, yeah, that like, like, are you doing what makes you happy today? And if not, then why not? You know. And what makes me happy is hanging out with the people I care about. You know, genuinely. Yeah, because I started playing games again, which with you guys and stuff. That's a lot of fun. And I was thinking about it, it's like, you know, people look at playing games as, like, procrastination. I think it is if you play, like, that's all you do, and that's not your ambition, which is, like, to be a programmer or something like that, right? Like, if you don't see it as a career path, or you don't, or not even that, like, if you don't see it as a genuine passion, like, it's just something for you to escape, and you do it too much, like, you're escaping pretty much your whole life, right? Then I think, yeah, it's, it's kind of tarnishing, right? But if you're just doing it recreationally, like, if you're just, like, you know, I'm gonna put an hour here, about an hour there... You know, that's, I don't think that's dangerous. I think that's that's healthy because you're letting some anxieties out, right? Versus just constantly be constantly working, constantly. You're not having fun anymore. You're, you're like I found that that's what happened. Like art started stopped being fun because when art was fun for me is when we were hanging out, right? Kaylin, like it was just you, me, and all the boys. That's why we right now we have a I have a thing that told Kaylin's operation bring Cal, Kaylin to SoCal. You know. And the real reason I want to do that is not so much to, to just help him with his career. It's so he can be with us again, you know, hang out, and we can start doing sketch groups again and concert clubs and do events, you know, and just be together. Because uh, Cameron's like one of my best friends. He's been there for me for everything. Like, he's seen the dark sides and the bright sides, you know. And that's why I, you know, I could bring, I could bring a whole elite uh, set of artists to these events, right? There's all kinds of people that I can totally reach out to that truly, truly are amazing artists, amazing structures, right? But I bring people like Kaylin and Dan, you know, and now, um, you know, Jamaro and JP because these people I feel like are really good friends of mine, you know? And people I care about. Like, I've seen them do really good things for me uh, and for others, and that means a lot. Because uh, being good at art is, is doesn't, <laughs> being good at art doesn't make you uh, a, a a decent person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, you could be good at art, for sure. Like, good for you, you know? But I, I want to try to keep people like Kaylin around. And that's why, I like, Operation Bring Kaylin to SoCal is in full effect. I like, I like the name. <laughs> <laughs> Operation. Yeah, Operation Bring Kaylin to SoCal. Bring him back. So he could be with uh, his friends and family. It's really really where it's at so, like I said what's important to me is my family and my friends and to me Kalen is family I don't see Kalen as just a friend I see him as like a brother and so gotta bring my brother home yeah whatever <laughs> you just yeah hear, whatever you just hear Kalen cry <laughs> you just can't even go Verizon yeah I wanna delete everything I wanna just sign Let's off delete I just, want, I just want a new name turn my power off dude new name new alias <laughs> I want to be a completely different person. Hi, DMV. Can I change my name to... <laughs> yeah, what happened to Kalen? Uh, I don't know. I told him I loved him, and then uh, he changed his whole identity. <laughs> he rage quit 
life. He rage quit life. Yeah, he's now living in a. He's now living in a Dubai. Why? What? Why Dubai? I don't know, man. New life. <laughs> he's a prince now. Yeah, man. People change. Yeah. <laughs> he's a prince. That's the oh. best way to describe it. Yeah, man. People change, man. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> Yeah, man. People change. That no, was... that, that's not how people change. That's pretty extreme. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's not like, a change, man. <laughs> that is like complete flip of your life. <laughs> like, yeah, man. People change. What are you going to do, man? They change. No, 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 no. This is not... You don't get it. <laughs> this you is change your like... hat. You don't change your identity. <laughs> change your clothes. I'll change. Yeah. All right. Anyway, is there any other questions or suggestions? Yeah. I still have to do the slaves. I still haven't forgotten about that. Oh, you know what? Before I forget. We say sleeves or slaves? Slaves. Slaves. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> They're really just like McDonald's employees. Oh, okay. It's all so, the same. It oh, so I can do that with this, actually. This would be great. So someone was asking how to do silhouettes. So basically, I just use a really hard brush, and I just draw the silhouette. And the, the way that I imagine this, too, is that I imagine that the silhouette has to... Let's see. This is, I mean, this is going to be like a... Because these burgers aren't normal size; these are like big burgers. And to me, like the silhouette has to read like what I intend it to read. And if it doesn't, then you know, I just keep going. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do this. Uh, you know, what? this needs to be bigger. Uh, but this is pretty much how I did. It. And in this instance, I'm doing McDonald's slaves, and there's like a, a couple guys carrying like kind of like a like a gurney, but it's like the, a burger on it. Anyways, any other questions? Okay. Um, Nick said, are internships only for people in school? I can tell you no. Not at all. They're not, but uh, some people might pull off the idea that they don't have to pay you. That's illegal. At least in California it is. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, nah, man, we don't we don't pay interns. That's, well, they, they'll yeah. say like it's for like experience or some, some bullshit. Like, don't, no. All internships, if you're doing a job and they're using that work to put into their game uh, or the project or whatever, and it's like to get them money, nah. Nah. Nah, bro. Nah. Mm -hmm. but, it's that uh, simple. Just no. Don't do that. Um, it, I had uh, Jason King worked at Blizzard as an intern, and they paid him. And they put his artwork in Hearthstone. You know what I mean? Like, that's. He had a job. You know what I mean? Like, it was a job. So keep that in mind. Yeah, the only thing about my internship is technically I was being paid in credit uh, for exactly. my college. That's so if I'm you're saying. in school, then you they can get away with that. Because that's still not, money, right? Because that's like that's like cr class credit. That's like you have to pass the class that you paid for anyway, right? And so like they give you credit for that class by doing the internship, so that they are paying you in some sort of currency that's legitimate. Now, the value of that legitimacy is arguable. Right, <laughs> but that is a legitimate thing that you can say you do, and it means something in the college system. But I would say I'd rather have money, <laughs> and I encourage people wanting to have money instead. All right, um, because yeah, because that's time that you're not working on your portfolio. You're, that's time that you're not working on your craft, you know. And so you got to keep that in mind. Actually, we had a we had a few students. One of my last student actually used uh, our mentorship class as a uh, as an internship. Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, yeah. She was like, "I use as an internship," and I was like, uh, "I don't know." I was like, "I guess you have to get that approved." And I guess I had to, I had to sign a few papers for the school, and they're like, "Yeah, like you're her like director or whatever, so you have to report like every few weeks." And then. I was just like, all right, what do you want to work on? She's like, I want to, I want to get good at like doing fantasy environments. And I was like, all right, here's your assignments. Yeah, totally. Start, start doing that. And then she came out and she she had, she had some pretty good work. And then, but then I had to add a write like a thing as as if like like she was my employee. So I was like, how was she as an employee? And I was like, yeah, she was good. She did everything I asked her to do. Can't can't uh, can't fault her for that. She yeah. she got a she got, she pretty much got a free like a, a free I guess I, I think the school paid for it but I think she got like a free internship or it's a free mentorship out of her class I was like yeah that works so yeah we're we're cool with saying that you were intern if that's something you need but we don't promote or say that we do that you know Cause, that's not a feature yeah, yeah we just we just 
we teach people. And if they, like, she asked, and they said, yeah, of course. <clears throat> we got your back. It's no big deal. Um, I know one of my buddies, he does, he graduated for graphic design. He was interning with Zoomies at the, what do you call it, like the big warehouse. He said it wasn't that cool. But anyway, he, that was unpaid because it was for his class. And then after he graduated, I think they brought him on full time. Yeah. So that can happen. Yeah, of course. You, you can think about all the great things that can happen, and absolutely. But, uh, yeah, treat it as a job. You know, when you get there, do your best. Definitely. You know, because uh, they might actually hire you, you know. They, yeah. uh, they Or you'll really get that work experience, you know. Like, there's definitely benefits from being in the studio. You're going to learn more there than you're going to learn, actually, in your school. So I get to understand that. You know, I have there. We, there's a great story of a student, uh, or there was a person who was a student at a school, and then they got an internship at Riot. They didn't get the job, but then they the next year they got the same internship. But then they Riot was like, "Do you just want to work here?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yes." And uh, all right, cool. We'll just hire you instead. You know, uh, but at that point he like he, he earned it. You know, he like worked his butt off for like a year after working there, seeing what he, he even said. Like he gave like a really good demo about it, and he's like. You know, when I was at school, I had no concept of what what I really was expected to me as an employee. And when I worked at Riot, just for that few months or whatever, you know, as a uh, intern, I realized that my school was not teaching me anything about what it is to actually work. You know, so that could happen, right? Because then he just kind of ignored his teachers and his, his school when he came back, but he just used their resources. He just focused, you know, and then uh, he came back with a vengeance. So that can happen too. Like give you some perspective of like what is expected of you, you know. Indeed. So I am not saying you shouldn't get internship. I'm not saying that internships are awful. I'm just saying treat it as a job, and that means you should get paid for it in some way or the other, and yeah. it should be justified. Right? Just like anything, it's what you make of it. You know, if you just kind of go on your nine to five and then you just you leave early or whatever, you're not talking to people or not trying to learn stuff, and then yeah, no one's told you. May, me. Go ahead, sorry. You may you may not get a lot out of it, but um, you know, use that as opportunity where you're in a. If you get if you get an internship at a studio, like you are now like in there, you're seeing everything that's happening. So you definitely would want to talk to more people and make and make friends and and see how things work. Because that's valuable knowledge. Not a lot of not a lot of studios will will you know. Um, give out, you know, how that pipeline works or how things work. So then that way when you go back after your internship, you now have a pretty good idea of how of how things work and you can figure out how you can how you can fit into that pipeline. So I mean if you just go in and treat it like a treat it like a job, you just show up and you leave, you know, then it probably won't get that much out of it. But if you come in as a sponge, you try to just absorb everything that people are giving to you, um, it can be a very viable situation. And then next thing you know, some of those people People always leave studios or whatever, and the industry is very, very small. And next thing you know, someone could say, "Hey, you know this person?" And they could be like, "Yeah, that person was an intern." And uh, they're like, "Well, how was he?" Be like, "Yeah, he was. He was actually really cool. He worked really, really hard. Took direction well. You know, just th- simple things like that. Like just working hard and taking direction. Like if someone knows you and can, can vouch that you can do that, um, that's a really big heads up. You know, because sometimes people are like really good, but they don't take direction very well. And you know how that can be sometimes." So um, it's whatever you make out of it. You just got to put the effort in. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. All right. Um, Was there any other kind of suggestions for this? Yeah. Uh, Kyle Towns said he should be in the back room of some club, uh, like some sort of Don, and he should have a cigar between his knuckles. I could do the cigar between his knuckles. The nightclub, let's see what I can do with that. Let's try and Brendan Isaiah Bingston stopped by. Oh, what's said, up, dude, Brendan? See you Saturday. Said, Yo, what's up, AJ and John? What? Yeah. <laughs> John's not in here, bro. Do you think do you think Mike sounds like John? That's an insult to Mike. <laughs> Whatever. No, it's an insult to you that you sound Brendan like knows me. Knows me. We're on yeah. Facebook. Anyway, um, we got more questions. So, let's see. Thomas Schaffer says, what kind of workload should people expect when they... Oh, I read what? that one. I read <laughs> that one. Forget about it. All right. Um, Brian Hermillingen, my bad, says, Anthony Jones, I saw that you experiment with other mediums like 3D programming, etc. from your YouTube uh, oh, art habit 3D animation. 
and whatnot. Do you yeah. still do that? And yeah, of course. do you feel by dabbling with other tools, uh, ones mentioned, has aided with your artwork? Absolutely. That's the long short of it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Next anything question. you yeah, anything you start diving into will only add to your knowledge. It's additive. People are afraid to try stuff because they think they're going to lose their skills. It's just it's, think how silly that is. You know, it's just it's just like just because I start to learn how to skateboard doesn't mean I forget how to walk. You know, um, like here's a good example. I played guitar in my teens, and I haven't played guitar for like nearly ten years, like actively. You know, uh, we're actually like yeah, like actively. <clears throat> I haven't played guitar for about nearly a decade, but I could pick up a guitar, and I can play it just fine. You know what I mean? In fact, I'll prove it to you. I can. I have a guitar in my sensor. Let me go grab it. Um, in the meanwhile, oh, snap. you guys answer questions. Hold on just a second. I don't want to do this. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. Let me see. Is there even anything? Okay, Thomas Schaffer says, so where can I find all of your guys' portfolio work? You can answer that. Um, our station, I believe. Last time I checked, you can just go to... Here, I'll drop links. Yeah, if you can, that'd be great. Yeah, our station or um, Robot Pencil, I think, has things. I'm not sure if it's up to date or not. But I imagine it, it, it has something. Boom. What's your handle? What's as K... Zero. Uh, uh, K zero four S K. All right, got you. One sec. Thank you. I appreciate it. Got the links, just about to drop them in. One sec. Thank you. All right. Hello? Hello? Can you guys hear me? I don't want to. What? I don't want <laughs> to. I don't want to hear you. <laughs> Got him. Stop playing music, AJ. Oh, I'm gonna sing a song too. Here we go. Watch. Let me get. Let me get, figure out a song progression. On. Is that John though? What's up, John? Yeah, John's What's literally gonna tell you to stop doing this. <laughs> oh, this is tight. Give me a topic to sing about. Poop. Why you shouldn't be singing? Poop. <laughs> oh damn. John. <laughs> John wants me to sing about poop. <laughs> because he likes when I keep him in the loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. And even though I don't want to sing about poop. Alright, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That on, Dude, that sing that great. at my funeral. Hey, you have, a, you, have a, you have a call with uh, Brendan at 2.30. That's on Friday, isn't it? It's today. Get out of here, John. Oh, snap. No, it's Friday. Brendan, it's Friday, isn't it? Tell John that he needs to look at words. Words written on paper. And paper written on words. Is it for Friday... Anyway, AJ, it is. <laughs> How are you guys Coming doing? in here derailing this stream <laughs> <laughs> with your false. And that's schedule. what Brendan told me, man. He said yeah. we can do Friday. I thought it was Friday. If it's today, that's fine. What time is it right now? All right, we're almost. Yeah, you that. have four minutes. Yeah, tell him. Uh, tell him I'm busy though. <laughs> 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 tell him uh, it might take a second. All right, okay. Is there any other questions, and then we we, we shall end the stream? Yeah, Roman, I'm not even gonna try this. Roman says, uh, "Show how you draw leather for the jacket." Show how I draw leather for the jacket. <clears throat> yep, that's for I'm another. Just read them out. That's another just read them out for another day. 
That's for uh, another day. Cam says, is it worth applying to companies even if there are no jobs posted? Is, the, is that a good way to uh, promo for freelance? I mean, think of it this way. You know, they're getting thousands of submissions, depending on how big they are. Right? Do you think that's going to do anything? I mean, you can. I mean, really, to be honest, there's nothing, there's no reason why you shouldn't. You know, I think uh, if you do something like apply every other day, that might that might get their attention in the wrong way, right? Um, but if you apply like once or twice a month, or or once a month rather, or once every few months, it makes more sense. You can have time to really upgrade your portfolio. But I mean, I, like I said in the beginning, like the best way is just be right in front of them and tell them who you are. You know what I mean? There's just no comparison to just being right in front of the recruiters or the art director and asking for those opportunities, right? Um, yeah, you can apply, you can do all that stuff, but just think about it from the perspective of a recruiter. Always, like, if you're curious to how people are going to react, just put yourself in their shoes. Would you be cool if someone was to send you stuff that uh, was perhaps not what they were looking for? And how would you re respond to that? Now, and be honest with that, right? Like, I love to do this with my students whenever my students are like, how do I know my portfolio is good enough for whatever studio? I say, well, just pretend you're a recruiter. Go to our art station and recruit people that are going to be hiring for, uh, recruit a team of artists that need to be doing artwork for a JRPG, <coughs> a JRPG, right? And look at all the artwork you'll ignore. You know what I mean? Not all the artwork that you're going to pick, but just also look at the artwork why you're going to ignore it. And ask yourself, is that artist a bad artist? And the answer is almost always, not really. But the reality is that you're not looking for that. If we're trying to sell some apples, we're not going to be looking at oranges. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if the oranges are delicious. And so whenever I tell people the same thing about recruit, like how to try to send my stuff in or whatever, just always put yourself in the perspective of the, the said recruiter. Right? And then you should understand, oh yeah, you know what? That that does make sense. Like, why why would I just email it in? Now, if they're looking for and they're like, you see someone on Facebook saying, hey, you know, send me a message. That's different, right? Because that's like someone on a personal level reaching out to you. In fact, some of my students got jobs for this recent Hasbro gig, you know, that like, I posted like about a few weeks ago. And I reached out to a few of them that I felt were good. And I gave the guy them personal email. And some of them are now potentially going to have an opportunity working with them. Right? Because that's that's a different scenario, you know? Because it's almost as similar to being on in person. Because it's it's almost there, not entirely, but it's almost right. And so, if you're ever curious about the best solutions to get a job, the the best solutions, in my opinion, are the ones that are most obvious. Yeah, you, if you're applying to Blizzard and you're sending your stuff to Blizzard, and they don't, they're not looking for a character concept artist, and you're a character concept artist, and you're applying for Blizzard, what are the outcomes? Well, how's the outcome going to work out? It's, very, very rarely will that work out well. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, it, very rarely will it work out the way you hope. I'm sorry, not well. That's a wrong term. Because well implies that it also it goes bad. What I mean is like how you expect, because, or how you hope, because it, it's nothing's going to happen. They're, they're probably going to see it and then just dump it into the pile of other recruiters out of the thousands of people that have also applied. You know? Um... But I could be wrong, obviously. There's, a, there's always that one opportunity that that recruiter happens to decide to look at your email. Your, your artwork happens to be the stuff that they're looking for right before they're about to announce. You know what I mean? Like, when all the planets have lined, that can absolutely happen, too. I'm just saying don't count on that because those are, you know, far and few between. Count on something that's reliable, which is going to events, talking to people as often as possible, finding your way to get your work out there and seen by people that could give you those opportunities. That's, that's my advice. That's all I ever did. And that's all I've seen other people do. And so, yeah, I mean, very rarely do you have somebody that just comes out and applies for a job and they just get it. All right. So there's two more questions and you want to cut it off there? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So Kyle C. Towns asked, any tips on figuring out exactly what you want career-wise? It's pretty loaded. But. Uh, I have a quick answer for that. Like, I, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know you, you know? <laughs> like, Damn. just don't. Like, if, if, if I were to say, just be a fisherman, would that be legit? You know, like, right. 
I would say, what do you see yourself doing most of? Like, look at your own portfolio. Because some people say, oh, I'm a, I, I want to do everything. And then I look at their portfolio, and there's nothing but characters. I was like, do you really want to do everything? You know? Because, like, 90% of your portfolio is characters. You know? And I think people are afraid that they, they might choose the wrong thing. Well, you won't know it's the wrong thing until you've tried. You know, that's another way of thinking about it. All right? Like, for instance, for me, I've been a concept artist for nearly a decade. And I, it's not that I don't think it's the wrong thing, but I realize what I really care about is teaching. You know, I've always loved to learn, and I've always loved to teach. That is what I really like to do. Uh, concept art just happens to be one of those things that I can teach people how to do, you know? Like, in the future, I'll, I might be teaching people completely different things, you know? Like, ten years from now, I might be teaching people how to be astrophysicists, you know? Because I really am into that. Like You have to... Go ahead. Yeah, concept art is, is just a thing that I'd really love to do, but it's not. It's like 99... It makes me 99% happy career-wise. What makes me 100% happy is uh, concept art. I'm sorry, it's teaching. <laughs> Concept art makes me happy, 99% of the time, and also 100% of the time. <laughs> no, uh, teaching, I love interacting with people and helping people achieve their own goals. So yeah, Kyle, I would say take a, take a second, look at your own like life and see what, what do you really like. I had a student who does really good cosplay, and I told her, you know, cosplay might be the thing that you actually love to do, you know, but you, you didn't see the career path, so you chose something like concept art, right? I was like, but... Like, try the cosplay thing. That could be what makes you money. Like, there's a, I can already think of all the ways that you can make a career out of that. Tutorials, uh, taking pictures, selling prints. There's so many things you can do. And you're already doing that stuff by going to cons all the time and dressing up awesome. You know, you're already there at these events. <coughs> People are already taking pictures of you. Just get a booth now. Start selling something. And make original co cosplay outfits, you know? That's the thing you could do now because you can draw. Like, find, you'll find it naturally by just doing it. Don't wait around. And don't let someone like me tell you what you should do. Because what if I'm wrong? You can, then you can be like, oh, AJ. <laughs> and then you put yourself in the same problem, the same situation, right? Yeah, man. I'd say the best thing that you can think of doing is definitely like focus on what is it that you like to do that makes you happy. But at the same time, I, I would say personally something that helped me, excuse me, helped me was to uh, remove doubt from your mind. Don't tell yourself that you're not capable of doing something. And if you can do that part, then finding a career isn't going to be as difficult as you think. Who is this guy? Who is Michael? Get him oh, out of here. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm a hopeful. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm a hopeful. Dreamer. <laughs> I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. All right. I'm a dreamer. Uh, All right. Michael's a good guy. Good guy. All right, so let's go. Last question. Uh, Roman Voladin. God, I hate I'm so bad at these names. I'm sorry. Sorry, Roman. Um, AJ, have you ever heard? Uh, have you ever tried to draw yourself and post it somewhere? I've never drawn myself really. I've only drawn cartoon versions of myself maybe a few times. I have a pretty accurate drawing for my presentation. Yeah, you, you, other people draw me better. <laughs> and that's it. Why are you laughing? Like that? <laughs> it's a good drawing. It's not mysterious at any. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Brent, anyway. Brendan's waiting for us. Hey, calm down, dude. Take it easy. Hey. Hey. Dude, know. you just come in here know. and derail everything. Brendan is patient, dude. See? Aren't you patient, Brendan? Get in here. He's so angry. <laughs> <laughs> come into this chat right now. All right, sorry. Okay. So I'll post this up. I'll make a high res version of this. I actually probably will paint on this a little bit more before I do. But thanks for everybody who who joined in on this. I appreciate y'all. John, Mike, Kalen. I uh, appreciate everybody who's hanging out in the chat. Thanks for the great suggestions of this burger-eating, gross-looking mother. Right. <sighs> okay. Anyways. <laughs> thanks again, guys. I got to go talk with Brendan. I'm going to okay. yell at him for interrupting my streams, not having our meeting on Friday. How dare he? Um, anyway, peace out, guys. Talk to you guys later.